Hi and welcome to tutorial 17, Reflective Writing. In the previous tutorial we looked at what reflective practice means. In this tutorial we'll consider how to write reflectively and the tutorial will help you understand what reflective writing is, what markers are looking for in reflective writing and how to structure your reflections including some tips for writing different sections. As we heard in the previous tutorial, Reflection is a skill that helps you learn from your own experiences and practice. It involves purposely thinking through and analysing something that happened in order to learn from it and improve your future practice. Reflective practice is a really important skill for your professional development and it's one that you'll develop during your time at university. Reflective writing is an exploration and an analysis of an experience that's been thought-provoking in some way for you. Now this could be, for example, an interaction with a service user, it could be your performance in an exam, it could be your experience of working in a multidisciplinary team. It can be a really challenging form of writing because it involves thinking and writing about your personal experiences, such as your anxieties, your mistakes and your successes, and for many of us this doesn't actually come easily. So reflective writing is a key skill for any practitioner because that writing process helps us to make connections and new insights that we maybe hadn't thought of before. And this can allow us to develop new ways of thinking about things which can then help us improve our practice. Unlike traditional academic writing, reflective writing uses the first person or I and that might seem a bit strange at first. Like traditional academic writing though, reflective writing does need to be as formal and as well structured as any other written assignment. It shouldn't include informal language or, or a sort of chatty style. Reflective writing should make links with the literature, so it should include some references and we'll consider this a bit more in a bit more detail later. So what are markers looking for? Well probably the most common mistake in reflective writing is to just simply describe what happened in an experience rather than to analyse it. Now in the previous tutorial we discussed the importance of in-depth analysis in order to learn from your experiences. Markers are looking for this depth to be demonstrated in your writing and at first it's really not easy. Like all skills reflective practice does take time and practice and to begin with you probably will be demonstrating more of a sort of basic descriptive writing than an analytical style. Now we'll look at how to achieve a deeper level of analysis later, but markers are also looking for you to make links with the literature where appropriate. And they want to see evidence of learning so that, the, so that your writing should clearly state what you've learned and how you will use that learning to improve your practice. Knowing where to start with reflective writing can be a challenge, but thankfully there are various models that can be used to help provide you with a structure for your reflections. One of the most commonly used models was identified by Gibbs in 1988, and as shown in the diagram, this model guides us through the various stages of the reflective process. Each of the stages shown can represent different sections of a, rep of a reflective account. So the writer starts with a description of an experience, and works the way around, finishing their account with an action plan. We'll look at each of these sections in a little more detail now. The first part of your reflective account, the description, is the easy part. This is the starting point for your writing regardless of what model of reflection you're following. So here you want to describe what happened. So for example, you might describe where you were, what you were doing, who else was there and what significant things happened. The key here is not to provide too much detail but enough to just set the scene. A common mistake here is to use up far too much word count with too much unnecessary detail. Alongside your description you should describe how the situation made you feel and what you were thinking at the time. Try to avoid simply stating that you felt good or you felt bad. You need to try and provide a bit more depth, so for example, what emotions did you go through from start to finish? Which one of these was the most significant to you? And how do you feel about the outcome? How did others influence your feelings, for example? 
Again, this section shouldn't take up too much word count and should be one of the shortest sections of your account. In the evaluation section, you should come to some kind of overall judgement about what happened. So for example, what was good about what you did and what didn't go so well? To show that you're being critical in your writing, consider good as well as bad aspects of your experience. There will always be some good bits and there will always be some bad bits that you should be able to draw upon. Try to avoid simply stating that you did well or not so well. You can add some depth by explaining what it was that you did that was good or not so good. Here we have a good and bad example of an evaluation section of the Gibbs model. Note how, in the bad example, the writer hasn't provided any depth or explanation. But in the good example, the writer's provided depth by explaining what he or she did that was good, and they've demonstrated critical analysis by considering an area that he or she could have improved on. You can pause the video while you read through the example. The analysis is the most challenging part of the reflective cycle, where you really need to stand back from the situation and think about what you can learn from it. Up until now, the reflective cycles got you asking the what questions, so what happened, what was good, what was bad about what you did. But to properly analyse and learn from your experience, you need to dig a bit deeper and start asking the why and the how questions. One way to achieve a deep level of analysis is to go back through the event that you're reflecting on from start to finish and ask yourself, for example, why did I behave like that? Why did I feel like that? What made me think like that? What assumptions, what values did I bring to the situation? And how did my thinking affect my behaviour? Why didn't things turn out as I expected? How will this impact on me? These are just examples, but these kinds of more probing questions are very challenging and they won't allow you to arrive at an answer quickly, but by probing like this, you will get yourself thinking more deeply. And remember, good reflective writing does require this kind of deep thinking. Here we have bad and good examples of analysis sections. Notice how in the bad example, the writers made the common mistake of failing to demonstrate any depth of analysis. They've just made a big statement about what they've learned from the experience without showing how they arrived at that learning. In the good example though, the writer's shown that they really have thought hard about the experience and they've dug quite deep by thinking about the assumptions that he or she's brought to the situation and how these were challenged. Another important part of the analysis stage is to make links with what you read. So here you might include some theories that could be relevant in explaining why things happened the way they did. So for example, if you behaved in a certain way when you were communicating with a service user, you might consider what the literature says about how to communicate effectively with service users and what strategies are recommended and how these link with what you did. You're not expected to have lots of references in a, refl in a reflective essay, but the marker does want to see that you can make links with your experiences about with what the literature says. Many students do receive poor marks for reflective assignments for not bringing the theory and the experience together. Going back to our previous example, this slide shows how the writer is drawn upon the literature to support his or her reflections. You can pause the video while you read through it. Once you've written your analysis, the hard bit's done and you're ready to write the conclusion. The conclusion in comparison to the analysis is quite a short section that sums up what you'll take away from the experience. Here though you can really show that you've analysed by thinking widely about what you've learned. So for example, you might have learned some things about yourself and your own specific ways of working, but you can broaden that out to think about what things you might have learned about other people or about the workplace more generally. Here we have a good example of a conclusion section. Note how the writer really does demonstrate that they've analysed widely by mentioning three different learning points. You can pause the video while you read through. The final part of Gibbs' cycle is the action plan. And this is where you'll develop a plan that will help you take what you've learned from the experience and use it to improve your practice. 
Here are the keys to convince the reader that you really are willing to learn from the experience. And to do that, you need to come up with an action plan that lays out the specific steps that you're going to take and when you're going to take them. A common mistake is to say that you'll, for example, be more confident next time or you'll be less anxious next time. And these kind of statements are too general and not really very convincing. What the reader really wants to know is how you will be more confident or less anxious. So you need to think hard about what things you could do to help you do this. Here we have good and bad examples of an action plan section. In the bad example, the student has said what he or she intends to do, but it's not actually very convincing. They haven't explained how they'll stop making assumptions or how they'll become more aware of their body language. But note how in the good example, it's much more convincing because the writer has explained how they'll attempt to improve their practice. Notice how the writer has actually been quite specific by, for example, saying that they will read a particular chapter of a book within a particular time frame. And this all helps to leave the reader with a sense that the writer really does mean what they say, they're not just saying it for the sake of it. Once you've written the action plan, you've completed the Gibbs cycle, and now we'll highlight the key points of this tutorial. The key points of this tutorial are Reflective writing allows you to explore experience in order to learn from it and use that learning to improve your practice. Reflective writing uses the first person, or I, and it should have a formal style just like any other piece of academic writing. Good reflective writing demonstrates a deep level of analysis, it makes links with the literature and it demonstrates evidence of learning from an experience. There are various models that can help you structure your reflections, but these models all boil down to the, the, the main key sections, which are a description of the event that you're reflecting on, an analysis of what happened and what you've learned from it, and finally an action plan to improve your future practice. The analysis section is the most challenging to write and requires you to dig really deep by asking yourself the why and the how questions and arriving at new understandings. And finally, remember that markers want to see that you have learned something from the experiences that you reflect on. And you can do this by writing a convincing action plan that details how you intend to improve your practice based on what you've learned.